Welcome to the Player Supreme Show here at ZenMac.com. I am your host, Player Supreme. Brothers, in a dance, two people cannot lead. You heard me say this many times on many sites that are out there. When you meet a woman and begin dating her, let me say that if you start trying to share leadership of your direction, meaning the relationship, where it's going, how it's going to be, when the sex happens, then I guarantee you it will end up on the rocks. Why? That is because you didn't establish dominance and leadership. If you start like a simp, you will end like a simp, as we saw with our member SR9. As you recall, SR9, he gets a girl and he disappears. She dumps him. He comes back. We just did a Google Hangout talking about the problem with him. You see, a lot of you guys got sold that bill of goods. You got hoodwinked, bamboozled as a popular African-American once said. Many of you guys have been hoodwinked by the popular feminist movement of the passive male role. You got sold on the idea that if you act like a man, women will find that unattractive. You got sold on the idea that a man is sensitive and sharing of leadership. And let me tell you something, brother. Nothing could be further from the truth of what women want. You see, a woman wants to feel something, which is around a man. Your goal is to make her feel. Women tend to have a lot of preconditions than us guys do concerning sexual contact. They need to feel that that more criteria they have inside them has been fulfilled. And these criteria or these values, these so-called keywords, you should allude to liberally in your conversation so that the woman has the sense that, they, that their needs are being met, their criteria is being met. You want to stimulate and induce them using images and metaphors. Then you should refer reinforce them using proof by what's called enjoyable analogy. Now, what are these criteria that women are looking for? I'm going to give you six of the, just of the common ones. It's not all, just six of the more common ones. Number one, physical safety. Number two, she's looking for that emotional connection. And you often see women say, I just didn't feel it. I didn't feel a connection. Number three, trust. Trust, a very big one. I'll talk about that in a minute also. Number four, destiny. Number five, they want to feel like they're surrendering, surrendering to something greater than themselves. Oh, I was just swept off my feet. And we ended up in bed somehow. Somehow. Blink, blink. <laughs> and also, number six, emotional variety. Now let's start with physical safety. This is a very important criteria for women because women, they rarely lose sight of the fact that she's vulnerable on the physical level. Any man can overpower her and rape her. Almost any man she encounters will be able to, to take advantage of her physically. So much of the function of her male mate in her eyes, is to also protect her. To protect her. And having a man who can defend her physically is very, very important to women. Even if it's not even conscious, it's subconsciously important. Go back to caveman days. One look at caveman days and you'll see why it's actually programmed into women's unconscious mind to find dominant males that can protect them from other males and other bad situations out there. 
So talking about physical safety directly tends to produce thoughts of, of physical danger, and it might even make her kind of frightened of you. So it's better to talk about states of relaxation and comfort in your, in your conversation. <clears throat> but if you've been taking martial arts, they'll mention that you're also a martial arts student. That will make her feel safe with you. She knows that you will be able to protect her. Now with number um, two, four, rather words, let's look at number four, which is destiny. And also number five, surrendering to something greater. Because those two tie in really well together. These are very important women because sex in their minds to a, to a woman can be so meaningful, so dangerous, so powerful, that it's easier for her to experience it if she can listen carefully. I'm using quotes. Imagine me using quotes. Disown responsibility. I don't know what happened. We were talking, then suddenly, it's not her fault that she ended up in bed with you. It was destiny, get it? She surrendered to something greater, to passion. That's how she rationalized it. Sex wasn't her idea. It wasn't your idea. It just happened. It was destiny. It wasn't planned. She was swept away. You get it? She was swept away. Her passions were overwhelming. It just happened. It was meant to. There's your destiny. It was meant to be. Do you get it? This also reflects the feminine emphasis on the irrational and the non-logical. The belief that the unknown easily sweeps aside human plans and human virtues. And women tend to believe that when something is unplanned, when something overpowers her thoughts and intentions, it's more valid. It's actually more true. It's more real. She believes in you more when that happens. Okay? See, the notion of destiny is so commonly applied that it seems like it's a built-in category in women, a built-in criteria, a built-in test as how she feels about a man and a possible relationship. When she feels really, really good about a sexual situation, guess what? I'm going to do the quotes again. Then it was meant to be. If she stops feeling good about it, then it wasn't meant to be. As what happened to our boy SR9. His girl said, as all women will always say, it just wasn't meant to be. If you've ever been in a relationship and the girl broke up with you, did you not hear that? It just wasn't meant to be. But in their minds, but hey, this is a really cute, fun guy over there. <laughs> she just met and maybe possibly a relationship with him is just meant to be. <laughs> Surrender is very similar to the feminine aspect of sex for women. For a woman, <clears throat> it's a matter of giving in to something overwhelming. If you study the novellas that they read, those romance novels, that's what happens to the women in there. They were swept off their feet by some powerful, handsome dude. And they gave in to something that was so overwhelming. Like giving in to an overwhelming passion. To something that's so right. There's a key word there. So right. That she has no choice in the matter. Hmm. And most her only choice should be whether or when to recognize the inevitability of the situation. There's their minds now, think of this, how women think. Not all, but a, a large amount of them think just like this. Now, you need to start back engineering women. 